WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. News is brought to you by New Look Home Design. Well, what a great football weekend. And for me personally, Saturday saw my uh, two favorite football teams win two glorious victories, the Navy midshipmen out in Annapolis, and then, of course, the Michigan Wolverines. It's Michigan versus everybody right now as they went into Penn State and beat Penn State. And then yesterday, two games, Trevor Maddich, two games on at the same time. The Lions and Chargers was a phenomenal shootout. But then the Commanders and the Seahawks, Ended up being a really entertaining game, very old school. And, well, Washington fell just short, didn't they? Yeah, they did. But at least they're not getting blown out. You know, you look at the the bright side. And, and ah, in the past, wait a minute. too many is games that, where there weren't Is that going to be the big marketing campaign for season ticket renewals? <laughs> at least we're not yeah, getting it's, blown it's out. Like, <laughs> it's like a country song. You know, it's like, it's like they used to be, since it's Thanksgiving, they used to be pumpkin pie without the pumpkin. Now they're pumpkin pie without the cinnamon. It's not as bad, but it's still not ready for Thanksgiving dinner. We're getting there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's a couple of noteworthy things about this game. Uh, First of all, very hostile environment. It's hard to go into Seattle and play that well, and they did play very well. Um, And Sam Howell, once again, is looking like he's going to keep his position as the quarterback, right? there's, There's not a whole lot to complain about with Sam Howell. No, he, he is more decisive. He's more, I think, knowledgeable. He's, he's getting the ball out quicker. And most importantly, he seems to be learning from his mistakes and not repeating the same mistakes. Early in the season, he would hold the ball too long and get himself sacked. I mean, he gave up millions of sacks. Some were the offensive line's fault, but many of them were his own fault. And it seemed like, you know, our hope, and we talked about this, that, that I hope it hurt. Because some of, some of the things he did were just inexplicable. Well, he's getting better at those things. He's getting the ball out faster. And because he has not plateaued yet, he gives you confidence that he could continue to grow into the quarterback this team needs. So can I ask you about this call early in the game? You know, th- th- listen, this is a close game. Last-minute field goal, Seahawks win 29-26. It would have been different sh- would the commanders have been at their full defensive complement, especially in the secondary. Emmanuel Forbes Jr. in a first quarter uh, tackle against uh, Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Tyler Lockett. It was a helmet to helmet hit, and we've seen this, and we know what's going to happen. You're going to get a personal foul, but he was ejected from the game, Trevor. And I'm sorry, I've I've been watching all season. A couple of times, people will get ejected, but this didn't seem that egregious. In fact, it seemed sort of like a secondary hit. What was the grounds for ejection here? Helmet to helmet. And a pretty hard helmet to helmet. It didn't seem like he was targeting intentionally. It didn't seem like he he put a target on Lockett's hat, you know, his helmet, and just went in there and tried to take him out of the game. It seemed like he was coming in to try to make a tackle. The problem is it is on the defense in a situation where a receiver is catching the ball and gathering himself to make sure that hard helmet to helmet contact does not happen. And that might not be fair. But that's the way it is because the NFL is trying to remove that from the game, and I think that's right. It's one of the places where the interests of the players and the interests of the team, the owners, converges because, yeah. you know, the, the players don't want to have concussions and stuff, and the owners, right. they know that this is entertainment and head trauma is not entertaining. No, I get that. I do. I guess what I'm saying is I, there are other helmet to I, – I, I'm sure that there were other calls of helmet-to-helmet hits in yesterday's games that didn't end up in injection. Why is it sometimes it gets ejected uh, – the player gets ejected and sometimes they don't? Well, because of whether or not the, the player that gets hit in the helmet is considered a defenseless player, you know, which a receiver oh. in the process of catching the ball is. And this went to – I think it's New York where they went to Command Central where they have kind of a pod of of officials that – go over what happened at the remote site. And so mm-hmm. this wasn't just the officials on site. Okay. All right. Well, what do you, overall, are you, are you encouraged by where the commanders are right now, um, given their schedule going forward and the way they're playing right now? Well, they're, they're two games out of the last wild card spot now, but that's just mathematical right now, the way they're playing, Larry, no, I'm not encouraged. They've lost three of their last four and they've just traded different units of the game failing, essentially. I mean, they lost to the Giants 
14 to 7. The offense completely miserably failed, especially the pass protection, because the Giants just were a terrible sacking team coming into that game. They sacked Hal six times, and that was a combination thing, but they lost. Then the Eagles, the the defense failed. They gave up 38 points. They scored 31, but they lost. Then the Patriots, they came together. It was a pretty good team win. And then in this one, the defense failed as well because of, you know, giving up the late scores that allowed the Seahawks to win, including a 52-second game-winning field goal drive at the end. So they're trading off which unit is failing. All right. Well, we uh, got the Giants next week. That should be a win, but then it doesn't get any better. We got got the uh, Dolphins, the Cowboys, and the Rams. It's going to be a tough go here. Uh, going into December, but uh, not as tough as uh, the BYU Cougars are are facing right now, Trevor. No, and not as promising as the mighty uh, Michigan Wolverines. It's not too late to jump on our bandwagon. I welcome you with open arms. Are you ready? Penn State didn't throw the ball a single time in the second half. They ran it every time, and they smashed them. Well, that's because they stole the signs and they saw that they were playing the pass every play. So, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's what that's what the haters will say. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Michigan doesn't need to steal signs right now to win. Uh, you know, by the way, I know we're talking college football, but it is local because this Saturday, College Park, noon, against the Terrapins, the Michigan Wolverines are going for their 1,000th win in school history. That's the most wins of any college football program. Wow, that gives Maryland a great opportunity to put a fly in the – or to take the cinnamon out of the pumpkin pie. How about that one? Trevor, why Might would you happen. even suggest it's that? Possible. Why would – Why would? Why? Uh, no. They're going to beat possible. Maryland, and then they'll happen. go undefeated to play Ohio State. Uh, that's what America wants. I'm sorry, Terrapins. It's not going to happen. But let me tell you how it could happen, Larry, real quick. Alien oh. abduction. If, if a spaceship <laughs> comes down and abducts the entire <laughs> Michigan football team, it could happen. All right. Well, I wouldn't put anything past the Buckeyes. They'll stoop to no ends. Thank you, Trevor Maddich. It's 8.25.